Hi guys, today we're going to introduce three new symbols into our set notation. But before I do that, I just want to remind us of all the symbols that we've learned so far. So the first symbol that we looked at was actually looking at a set itself and the fact that all sets have names. And this set I've called here A. And within A, we have numbers and we could refer to those as elements. And that was our first symbol that we learned. After that, we asked questions like, is such a thing an element, is it not? And we used this symbol here for not an element. We then went on to asking what a subset was and what qualified as a proper subset and improper subset. So our symbol for subset was this long C, and if something was not a subset, it was this long C with a stroke through it. Our next symbol was the cardinal number, okay, and you've probably seen that before as a hashtag. And what the cardinal number stood for is it asked how many elements were in a set. So if I was asked the cardinal number of A here, which is this set I have up here in the corner, the amount of elements in A is three. We've got one, two, three. So the hashtag or the cardinal number represents how many elements. We then looked at if a set was empty, how would we use notation to describe that? And we said that we would use this symbol here or this symbol here, the empty brackets, and that stood for the null set. And it basically means when a set is empty. Then we just expanded our knowledge on subsets and we split them into improper and proper subsets. And we said a subset is a part of a set and a proper subset is any part of the set that has at least one or more elements. And an improper subset has all of the elements or none of the elements. So always for our improper subsets, they will be the null set or the full set. So in the case that we have here, it will be three, four and five. Should really be doing my curly brackets there. And our proper subsets are basically any amount of elements that are one or more, but not the full thing. So you could have three on its own, four on its own, five on its own. Then you could have three and four, three and five, and then the last one is four and five. So they are the proper subsets of A. We then moved on to looking at Venn diagrams that had two sets, and these two sets overlapped. All right, so here I have the two sets, X and Y, and we looked at the different ways of describing different sections of the Venn diagrams. The first one we looked at here is this section here, which is the middle bit, or as we recall it, the intersection. Okay, now the intersection is an unusual part because, as we said, it is part of the X circle. All right, so it's in the X circle there, but it is also part of the Y circle. All right, and it's the bit in the middle that they overlap. We refer to that as the intersection, and the symbol we learned was X, N, Y. So that represents X, N, Y, and that is the intersection of both X and Y. So where they meet or where they overlap. We then looked at a symbol that represented all of the circle X and all of the circle Y and the intersecting part and we looked at the symbol for that was U. So this would be represented by X, U, Y and the U stood for union which means together, so X and Y together. Okay, so that's just to give you a quick overlay of all of the symbols that we have learned so far. So we're going to introduce three more, so I want you to pay good attention, please. All right, so the first term we're going to look at today is universe or universal sets. And to sum it up, the universe contains every single element. So we look at a question here. All right, so the question I'm given here is, U is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And the U is the symbol for universe. Okay, so it's a little bit different to the union symbol, it's more of a capital U. 
okay? And then I'm told A is equal to 2, 4, 6 and 10. So the set A equals 2, 4, 6, eight, sorry, 2, 4, 6 and 10. And B is equal to 1, 3, 5 and 6. And we're asked to fill this information into a Venn diagram. Now, this section here is not new information. We've done several examples of this in school. And so we're going to just fill this bit out first. So I'm going to draw my two circles. Uh, these are my two sets. I'm going to label one A and one B. And as normal, the first part I fill in is this section here called the intersection. So we always fill this part in first. So from looking at my information, I can see that both the set A and the set B contain the element 6. So I'm going to mark that and I'm going to fill that in first. So in the middle I have 6 and now I'm just going to fill out the rest. So in A I should have, in circle A I should have 2, 4, 6 and 10. So I already have a 6, so I'm now going to write in the remainder. So it's 2, 4, 6 and 10. And within B then I should have 1, 3, 5 and 6. So I already have a 6, so I need a 1, a 3 and a 5. So if we look carefully now, we have placed all of the elements in A and in B and in the intersection. But the key word that we're learning today is the universe. And the universe contains every element. And how I represent this is I actually draw a large box around my two sets or my Venn diagram. And I say that this is my universe. Now, I must have all of these elements here within my universe. So if I go through them, I can check and see which ones do I not have. So one, I have here. Two, I have in A. Three, I have in B. Four, I have in A. Five, I have in B. Six, I have in both A and B, the intersection. Seven, so I'm gonna put a circle around seven because seven, I do not have anywhere in A and anywhere in B but the universe contains every element. So outside of the circles A and B, I am going to place the number seven, okay? And that is the rule that I do for any situation that that happens. Again, if we look at number eight, eight is not in A and B, but it is in the universe. So I'm going to circle it again, and I'm gonna place eight anywhere outside the box, as long as, sorry, outside the circles, as long as it's outside the circles and within the box, it can go anywhere. Again, I come across the same situation with 9. 9 isn't in A or B, so I'm going to place 9 here. And 10, I have an A. So I have filled out this information. All of the sets are filled in. All of the elements are marked in. And any elements that are not in A and B but are in the universe get marked in outside. So using the information that I've just set out here, I'm now going to learn a new notation, a new question. And that question is find or list A slash B, okay? I'm going to put it up here exactly what that forward slash means. That forward slash means but not in. So this question here is actually saying list what's in A but not in B. So I must write down everything that's in A but it cannot be in B. So if I look at my circle A, I can see that the elements inside it are 2, 4, 10, and 6. But I am asked the question, what's in A but not in B? And if you have a look here, you can see that 6 actually is in B. So we would exclude that, and the answer would be 2, 4, and 10. And I will do my squiggly rack. Another question I could be asked is list what's in B slash A. And remember, this is the new symbol today and this symbol is but not in. So this question reads what's in B or list what's in B but not in A. So if I look at my B circle here, I can see I have one, three, five and six. And I'm asking myself what's in B but not in A. So again, the six is an A, so I will be excluding that. And my answer is one, three, and five. 
All right, first year, so what I've done here is I've just replaced everything that I had written down within the first few minutes, everything that we've learned so far. And I'm gonna add in the new key terms and notations that we have done today. So the first one I said is the universe. And the universe is a capital U, and that is represented by the large box that the sets are inside, and the universe represents all elements. The next thing we learned is we learned this symbol here, which is forward slash. So what's in A, but not in B? And I can draw a diagram to represent this. So if this is my two circles, I'm gonna label this one A and this one B, and I'm asked to sh shade in what's in A, but not in B. So this is my A circle, and I want to color in everything that's in A, but not in the B circle. And so I will be excluding the intersection part, and I will just be shading this region here. Another way it can be phrased is what's in B, but not in A. And how I can represent this is I have my two circles again, A and B, and the question is what is in B, but not in A. So this is my B circle. So what is in B, but it can't be in A, and this would be the section here I would color in. All right, so they are the three new key terms or notations that we looked at today. Okay, so tonight's learning check is to go over the two new symbols that we have looked at today. They are the capital U for universe and the forward slash which means but not in. Make sure you're able to explain both of these in your own words and we'll do some questions on them tomorrow.